It is probably not an exaggeration to say that our wonderful city would not be the dynamic, fashionable, cosmopolitan, and self-confident metropolis that it is without the influence of Toronto Life magazine over the last 50 years. And if it hadn't been for the commitment of this gentleman, Michael DePossier, Toronto Life would not exist today. Michael was not the founder of the magazine, but he was the man who saved it from an early death and gave it new life 45 years ago. But Toronto Life is merely one notch on a list of initiatives and achievements that have made Michael one of Canada's most accomplished and most committed entrepreneurs and philanthropists. And in the best spirit of philanthropy, Michael is not one to seek or find the limelight, so we're very grateful that he agreed to join us here tonight to talk about his current career and projects. Michael, I'm thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you. Well, we are too. We yeah. had to twist your arm just a little bit to get you here, but yeah. we're very pleased that you were able to join us. Well, I almost wasn't here. I threw myself down a flight of stairs last week. Uh, and you're fine now, okay. at least by all appearances. I have, I have a sore back. And we have a sore back, but we won't tax your back. We're I'm going old enough to. to have a sore back. <laughs> well, let's, well, you have a, a long career, so let's start with that. Okay. 45 years ago, um, how did Toronto Life land on your doorstep, or did you land on its doorstep? Um, my wife, Honor, and I, and our kids uh, rented on Ward's Island in uh, 1969, 70, and I got to know Peter Zosky who had a house over there. And we schemed about a city magazine for Toronto, a better one than the one that was there, perhaps copied uh, off uh, New York Magazine, which was what everybody looked to. And it was a weekly. Right. And Zosky thought, we need a weekly, and I thought, you know, that's too many. Uh, and then it was announced that Toronto Life was uh, packing it up. A guy called Michael Sifton had been uh, the proprietor, and he had lost enough money and decided he'd had it. And uh, so I went and saw him and raised some money, and we soldiers on. Uh, it worked. So you it saved took a while. It, but you changed it, too. We changed it. Yeah, yeah. What, what had prevented Toronto Life in its first five years from succeeding? And what did you do to turn it around? Yeah, well, and was it an overnight success when you did it? I think we were lucky to catch the growth of the city just at the right time. This was back in the days where there weren't cheese stores at the corner. That's true. People mm -hmm. might, uh, and the uh, immigrants were coming in, you know, new Canadians. And they were accustomed to going out and having a beer in the in the pub down the street, but there weren't pubs down the street that served beer out, and, and so on. It was a little bit of a uh, which happened first. Mm -hmm. Did the mood of Toronto change in wanting more restaurants, or did restaurants go up, grow up, and we all stopped hiding in our living rooms right. and so went you're out to So you catching a cultural this. wave, perhaps? I think, I think a little bit. Maybe we contributed. Mm -hmm. you know, but you we, were already we were, uh, in the publishing business. I you was, and, and your friend Phil Gray, Phil Gray had yeah. started a trade magazine yes. business, basically. Well, we bought one from a guy called Arthur Lowe, and it was for apartment owners. Yeah. That was uh, how it started. And uh, he was the editor, Arthur Lowe, and the associate editor was Edward High. <laughs> it, was, it was also Arthur Lowe. <laughs> it was a very thin staff. But you guys had a number of magazines that ultimately almost formed a who's who of Canadian magazines. Well, Can Canadian Geographic, end. well, I mentioned them at the top of the show. Yeah, Geographic, well, they, Canadian Art, ultimately. Um, mm -hmm. um, tell us some of the magazines well, that you... Well, we had the, had. the, the, um, the Money Spinner was a, a group called Where, as in Where to Go in New York. Chicago, London, and those worked very well because uh, advertisers in Toronto Life could skip an issue or two and, and still keep in front of the subscribing base. But when you visit New York, it's new people every day, and mm -hmm. so you have to, and, and yeah. every month, so you get sounds like a winning regular, proposition. For winning proposition, it worked out well. And yeah. the editorial was cheaper because you don't have to do investigative reporting on your town. You just have to tell them what the tourist highlights are and remind people the same stuff every month. So. Yeah, interesting. So you sold Toronto Life to St. Joseph's Media in 2002, I mm -hmm. believe. And um, do you ever look back and say, gee, I, I wish I still had a piece of that or I, I was still a part of that? Or do you think that was a 
good, clean break. You know, I left the magazine business on a Friday, and Monday I went to work on a whole new set of uh, visions. Okay, well, maybe yeah. you can tell us some of those new visions. Yeah. Well, yeah, because selling Toronto Life really gave you the freedom and uh, just the time to pursue a number of opportunities. You were already involved in a number of things, and we right. want to talk about some of those right. ventures. Um, in 2002, when you had sold Toronto Life, you were the co-founder of a new business and what is now a, a thriving investment fund called Investico Capital. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that, how it came about and what the mandate is. Yeah, we probably started too soon. We were perceived by Bay Street as kind of um, mindless tree huggers and not practical folk. And we should say, by the way, the eco in Investico in, is, is the environment yes. and... Right. Economics. Yeah. Not a traditional yeah. investment Call firm. Yes. Not a traditional. We're, we're into clean tech and, and uh, renewable energy, and organic regional 100-mile food, and uh, environment conservation connected companies, um, uh, people who um, don't pollute, and uh, clean up those who do. Right. So very pollute. ethical investing then. Yeah, we used to, I used to say, nobody else is uh, dumb enough to say, I said, we didn't, we didn't want to get pushed, uh, uh, flagged with this social responsibility too much because we were solid money-making opportunities. Right. That's, that was our proposition. A, a true I social say, enterprise. We don't care if we have eight-year-olds working 70 hours a week making the solar panels. So we're in the solar panel business. That's what we want to stress. Right. So right. Um, So what are the, some, uh, some of the ventures that um, Investico was able to get off the ground through um, your support? Organic Meadow. Mm, yes, yes we know that. Yeah. Dairy. Yeah. 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 yeah, milk and dairy. Yeah. 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 Ontario farmers doing a good job and, and uh, an organic uh, product. Yeah. Um, we had a, a, a company called Low Tech out of Newmarket. What did that And mean? they were the world leaders in little tags on animals, on birds, yes. salmon, moose, great right. big To be able to track and migration. For tracking, or, and yeah. they did more than just track. It, it could do the heartbeat and, uh, you so know. So the health. <laughs> yeah, and, and monitor how the animal's doing under certain kinds of uh, uh, conditions and what are the healthiest habitats and what are the stresses for them, they're still going. Successful mm -hmm. company, yeah. Uh, Canadian enterprise, right? We, yeah. You've been involved in increasingly uh, an increasing number, I should say, of uh, organizations that you've helped to get off the ground that have been uh, devoted to great causes. Uh, one of them is uh, you're on the board of uh, Highway for Heroes, that 170 kilometer stretch of highway right. from uh, on the 401 from Trenton to Toronto. Uh, I, to we ask found you about my that. partners um, who are uh, Mark Cullen, Canada's best known gardener. Yes, he gets right, yeah. flagged. He's and, got the uh, green community covered. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, Tony Di Giovanni, who runs uh, Landscape Ontario, he represents all the growers and all the nurseries. But you're and undertaking quite a big project with the highway. Tell us a little bit. We found 117,000 Canadians have died for Canada in all our wars, so we're going to plant a tree for each one of them on the Highway of Heroes from Trenton oh. to Toronto. And, and how's that project yeah, going? That's going very well. The local communities are all turned on. We got Coburg and Port Hope and everyone's chatting it up. We get the veterans and you get the greens. We, we need more trees in Ontario. We need habitat for birds and sure. we'd like a better looking highway. That wouldn't be all wrong. No, and, it'd be good. And then a, a living tribute as we call it for the, the men call and women who died for Canada. Yeah. Sure. We also then found out two million Canadians more or less have served fighting for the country and so we're going to plant two million seedlings on either side of the highway up to three kilometers. So in the end, the end will be Right. A few years country. from now. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. There's and another one that you wanted to ask about. Yes, uh, um, the World Wildlife. Thing. Yeah, so we you've have, got a venture uh, going uh, on there. They're coming into its third year. The Kids Run for Nature was invented by two 10 year old girls, and they had a run two years ago at Withrow Park. And 200 kids showed up. It's not competitive, but you go 1K or 5K, and you're running to save animals. And that is um, uh, used so as a, uh, we're using World Wildlife Fund as the way to save the animals. So they and raise they funds it. and those funds go directly yeah, towards? Yeah, and we have enough corporate sponsors and backers that 100% of the money that the kids pay goes to the animals. They're not 
no overhead. And so we're looking for new locations for new runs. The second year we were we had uh, 1,500 kids running in seven locations, okay. including Calgary and and uh, so Richmond these are Hill. And communities Portland. that apply, and you want this across Canada. If any community, any runners out there would like to have a kids run for nature in their town, we'd love to talk to them. Okay. You know, aside from the environment, aside from wildlife, right. aside from commemorating our fallen soldiers. Art is something that has been very close to you emotionally and in your career. Um, it's always been a passion. And as we discussed with our guest a couple of weeks ago, Sarah Milroy, yes. you yeah. and she were co-founders of the Canadian Art Foundation nearly a quarter right. of a century ago. Right. Tell us about how that came about and again, what well, was the purpose? Um, uh, no one's in Sarah's league, but certainly <laughs> certainly not me in, in the art world. Uh, she's magical and she knows the stuff and I'm just um, I'm just the guy who noticed that Canada's art magazines had disappeared and there was no headquarters for uh, Canada's artists so she was the obvious person to um, talk to and, well, you're being and we've got modest. it going. You are being it's modest. been Very going. We've had our 30th anniversary so yeah. this was wow. one but some ideas don't last but this this one did so uh, yeah. an art magazine combining your knowledge of the the publishing magazine world with your knowledge and, and aspirations for mm -hmm. art was that and Canadian artists and Canadian the gall artists, to bug yeah. your friends to <laughs> donate to yeah <laughs> <laughs> no that was great um, and it's going well uh, 30 years later going very it strong is, yeah and of course they're they have electronic dimensions to what they do which we didn't have at the beginning well everything in the magazine world right. uh, and in media does now so yes you um, were also you I mean art is more than what we've just discussed you were the chair of the Ontario College of Art you were uh, director of the Toronto Arts Council um, getting back to the World Wildlife Fund you were chair of that uh, organization for a number of years it's interesting that there's such a passion for the environment the wilderness um, nature and so on but you're a real city boy. Where did this love of the great outdoors and environmental causes come well, from? I'm a city boy, but every Thursday I try and arrange my life that I can get out of town and we have a, uh, have a place in the country. Mm -hmm. And we planted 60,000 trees there. Good and it's very peaceful and uh, if you like just wandering around in the Ontario countryside, then I, I like that. I'm not playing as much golf as I used to play. Mm -hmm. I'm competing well, a, with the trees. Shame. Compete, yes, right. Yeah, you know, but you you're doing were a lot. you were described. There was a wonderful article in a recent edition of Toronto Life, mm -hmm. commemorating the 50th anniversary of the magazine, and you were described. And I got to quote this as by the author as someone who seemed to, to be the epitome of privileged old Toronto, but. I would say in spite of your family upbringing and your comfortable uh, childhood, you've always been somewhat of a rebel and a bit of an iconoclast. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the friends and colleagues that you know in privileged old Toronto do as much as they should in philanthropy and causes and um, just issues of the day as much as they should or are they too comfortable well, in their privileged well, old nobody, existence? Well nobody's doing yeah. as much as you are. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> point. Yeah. Yeah, that's an exaggeration yeah. but uh, you know you get it's a mixed bag isn't it? The, um, some of them are doing extraordinary things. Helen does extraordinary things. Yes, she does. And uh, okay. you do extraordinary things too in your world of sport. Um, we make our contribution and you know some are satisfied with not doing much and others are only satisfied if they're doing more and my well you're very generous in my, the, in my um, problem in life is I get these smart ideas and I go to people why don't you and they say well why don't you mm -hmm. yeah. so I say oh okay yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you're still doing and encouraging still doing others. That, yeah. To, yeah. I like that. So, you know, uh, with all that you're doing and have done, you've mm -hmm. really helped to mold this city and uh, influence it uh, through the magazine and through initiatives just as, uh, like the ones mm -hmm. you've described. Has the city turned out to be uh, as you hoped it would be? Is Toronto as great a city? Uh, well, you always aspire more. You can't be a critic of a city unless you have a basic affection for it. So, yeah. I have a, a 
a list of criticisms. But I saw John Tory on a, a, an arrival station last night with the, on TVO, and you know he's terrific as the mayor. We like his decisions, and he's too conservative for me. But you know, basically, I think. When you look at U.S. politics, for example, right. we're lucky to have a guy like John Tory as yeah, the mayor. Sure at least are. you know he's telling you the truth. Right. You know, the truth doesn't so seem. So our to leadership, matter. you're you're comfortable with our leadership, uh, and what about our speaking, citizenry they all and our community? Hard. They're all trying to do the right thing. They make the wrong decision from time to time. And yeah, and are our communities thriving? I think our communities are thriving. I, I think all of two hundred thousand folks who move to Toronto every year yeah. have made a huge, wonderful contribution. We're part of five families have been waiting for a year for our Syrians to come. Ah. Yeah, I'm not sure where they got held up on the, right. the line, but we know who they are. Yeah, and Toronto's been very welcoming. Do you know very welcoming, yeah, and, and most of them will fit in. Some of them will go astray. We all have, you know, guys who went to my private school. Some went astray and some didn't. You know. you know, it's a very different city, though, than the one that we all grew up in in the 1950s and 60s. And I would think, again, partly due to the influence of your magazine and your publications, when you look back. Well, we were served. We had three big newspapers. Yes, we, uh, we sure did. And all kinds of television. We've got about and, five but, seconds to ask you this, but when you look yeah. back, is there anything you haven't done that you would love to have done? Yeah. Very yeah. quickly answer. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I just hope I'm blessed with uh, energy and health and hope I can just keep hanging in and we hope so too. shoot a better golf scorer on the way along. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. Michael, thanks so much yeah. for being thanks. here. It's great. We'll okay. be back with more after this short break.